everybody, this is Grace Potter coming to you from the beautiful Lake Champlain in Vermont. And today I'm going to share with you a secret recipe that I only share with people I really like. It is my Cabot Cheddar Cheese Mac and Cheese Cupcakes. Are you ready for this? We always start with a roux and what a roux really does for a mac and cheese is it creates that base, it creates that foundation that just makes the magic happen. Um, and also a platform for the cheese to melt into its meltiness. So, I like starting a roux with onions and garlic. Some people aren't so into the onions and garlic, but I think it's it just flavors the milk and the cheese and kind of sets the tone for a beautiful, beautiful flavor. So, we're dicing the onions and then we're gonna, um, in probably a 15 to 17 inch saucepan, heat about two tablespoons of olive oil, maybe a little more than that if you're an oil fan like me. Uh, glory. Glory. So we kind of just distribute out the onions and the garlic enough so that they kind of start to brown. We don't want them to get too brown. If you have really high heat on your stove, I like to turn it down to about medium. So it just doesn't get overwhelmed. You don't want to, you don't want little brown pieces of stuff popping up in your mac and cheese. You want to keep it nice and even. We're going to add some milk. You want to add just enough so that it cools the whole mixture down and you want to stir continually while you do that. Now that this is in here, you want to let this go and continue stirring it until it starts to simmer around the edges lightly. And after that, we're going to add the flour. The thing about flour when you add it to anything is you want to be careful. Make sure that you're whisking as you go, you don't get those clumps. We're thickening the roux now with a little bit of flour. My favorite thing to do, and when I was a little girl I used to do this with my mom, is to add the flour, but it can really screw things up if you don't do it right. So, it's going to get a little bit play doughy, and that's what the next cup of milk is for. So you're just adding another round of milk to it, to sort of soften the whole thing down again, making sure to keep it a creamy texture. All right, we've got this on a nice low heat now, and this is pretty much ready for the cheese. So we're going to start with the Cabot Seriously Sharp Cheddar. This is my favorite part, ready? Oh, do you hear that noise? That's the cheese being happy that it's been invited to the party. So, here comes the Gruyere. Gruyere is a nice texture for any mac and cheese. I just like adding it because I feel like it just makes me feel, I don't know, like I'm from Switzerland or something. Um, and then my final thing, which I just had to add to this, in, you know, th this, you can do it any which way with any kind of cheese you like, and if spice isn't your thing, that's fine, but I, personally feel that the world will never be the same since the Cabot Hot Habanero came into my life. So there it is. Magic in the making. So all the cheese is going to melt into the roux and when you do this you're going to notice that it's going to start getting sticky again and that's what that last round of milk is for. You really want to keep the roux creamy, you want to keep it consistent, you want to make sure that everything's blending properly. So. As this goes, you reduce the heat and you continue stirring, making sure that the cheese is happy in its new home. The mac and cheese is cooked. I like to leave it a little al dente, but not too much because, because this is whole wheat, it absorbs the roux as it cooks and you don't want it to be so al dente that the pasta is drying out the entire mixture. So now we're gonna add one final round of liquid, which is some half and half and a couple of eggs. The eggs are what's going to hold it together in the cupcake form. So there's a little bit of baking involved in this. The reason you don't add the half and half and eggs early is because the roux is hot and you don't want to cook the eggs before they go in the oven. I get the feeling like we want to add a little more flavor to this. So Parmesan. Parmesan is going to balance this all out and give it that mac and cheese crusty fabulousness that we love. And also, it's not mac and cheese without truffle oil, so I'm going to be not so judicious with my distribution of this truffle oil. Oops, it's all gone. Then I also like to add a little tiny bit of salt because this is essentially batter. It's like cake batter. So you want to make sure that it, it tastes as good as whatever you're going to put on top of it. And I do a couple of pinches just all around. Now keep in mind, cheese is really salty, so you don't need a lot. But this is a lot of pasta and the roux is very thick and lovely. Okay, this is the fun part. I like to do a good heaping spoonful. I mean, you don't want it to fall over the edges of the cupcake tin, but you really want to fill 
each well. Okay, this is my favorite part. Now we get to frost the cupcakes. Now when I say frost, I don't really mean frost. What we're doing is I have this fabulous little breadcrumb concoction that's a combination of whole grain bread that dried out. You can do it with really anything. This actually has some cornbread in it. And I like almost to have a stuffing quality to it. Not, you know, not those sort of tight little breadcrumbs, but something that really has a little attitude. Um, you know, that gives it that, that grandma's homemade feel. All right, now for the final touch. I like to sprinkle a little bit of Parmesan on top of the whole thing just to give it a kick. And that final kind of sealed in loveliness. This is Parmigiano Reggiano, which is a nice salty blend. You can use any kind of Parmesan you like. Now we've got that oven preheated to 400. It's ready to roll. We're going to pop these babies in and make some mac and cheese cupcake magic. Oh. And they smell like heaven. Look at that. Let it sit for about 20-25 minutes and serve it.